Good morning, everyone. I hope you're enjoying the Odoo experiences so far. Uh, my name is Nathan. I'm a product owner at, uh, at Odoo. And um, I'll be introducing you a new feature for version 12. It's actually an extension of an existing one we uh, introduced in version 11. And those are automated activities and how they can help you stay on top of what's happening in the database. Okay. So just raise your hands if you don't know what the next activity is about in Odoo. This is version 11 feature, I guess. Okay, so I'll introduce it uh, real quick. So this is a lead, right? That's been pending for a while. I don't know if it's dead or not. So as, as a sales, what I can do, and that's, that, that applies to all the models uh, in which you have a channel like this, I could just schedule an activity on this record in the model for the leads. And just say, for instance, well, uh, next Monday, I just need to check if lead is alive, for instance, right? So scheduling, scheduling this activity was like, will actually make it show up in this, in this tab right there. And I'll be able to see per model which activity I've planned. So the past ones, those scheduled for today or the one for the future. In this case, it's on Monday, so I have, I have it right away right there. I can see all activities, uh, all the leads for which I have an activity in the future, and I can just mark it as schedule uh, as done right there from the from the view itself. So, in broad words, it's a reminder in a way, it's just a note for your future self to know that you should you should actually check this lead up, or for other employees as well. A few examples of those activities, for instance, is for the leads, so call the lead, like I just showed. Prepare a demo, for instance, for a picking or transfer, you can just put an activity to check if, if we actually received the transfer, like in a week or two. In the sales department, you can also remind yourself to send actually send the quote or upsell the order. And in the fleet for the HR team, uh, you could have uh, an activity uh, to remind you to actually renew the, the vehicle, vehicle contract. Right? But by looking at those, there's a few, and there's way more than those ones, those use cases. But there's a few that we could actually automate, like this one, for instance. If we actually deliver more than what has been ordered, then it's it's silly to as user to actually do it manually. We can automate this, right? Same thing goes for this one. If we if the system realizes that we're reaching the deadline, the end date of the contract, then we might as well just create activity automatically for the user, so he doesn't have to schedule what he can do today. So it's it's like automatic reminders. It's just a system telling you, well, maybe you should check that one out, so you stay on top of things. Um, that's, that's basically the idea. Still, other things with activities generated uh, by Udo. So it's reminders. You can uh, see them as reminders or alerts that the system uh, actually sets up for you. Um, the definition is quite straightforward, to be honest. It's just a trigger and condition and results, in this case, uh, an activity. So if I take the example for the fleet, for the contract, the vehicle contract, well, the trigger condition will be we're reaching the end. We nearly, we had 15 days uh, to the end date of the contract. So is going to trigger this activity, for instance, for the person responsible for, for this action, and just tells him that, well, in four days, you meant to actually renew this contract, okay? So instead of telling him I'm going to show it, because it's, it's much more efficient in, in this kind of uh, <coughs> these kind of features, I'm just going to show four of them, because they're around a dozen, uh, but those are four different ones that I've just pinpointed for you guys to actually, actually see in practice how it works. So for instance, <coughs> There I have a sale order, a quotation, not confirmed yet, <coughs> for some pineapples, for my, my customer pineapple lover. Pineapple lover ordered 10 pineapples, right? I'm going to confirm the order. <coughs> and this, this product, my pineapples, I actually invoice them based on order quantity, so I can invoice them right away. So I'm going to create the invoice. That, that, that's, that's pretty straightforward. We, I think most of you already know this, this flow. Uh, so we validated. So the 10 pineapples have been invoiced. I go back on my, uh, on my, uh, my sale, and you can see nothing has, has been invoiced. But then let's say that at delivery, pineapple lovers just, just go to the sales guy and go like, well, you know, I actually like pineapple swim a lot. I want five extra ones. So you could go to the picking and actually say, whoops. Well, but that's not meant to happen like this. I'm sorry. That's a demo effect. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> okay, let, let, let's, let's do that right away. I'm just going to check the, how we configure the products. Okay. So let's, let's go back a bit. So I create a new quotation. I 
and a product for 10 units. Save, confirm invoice. There we go. We validate it. Then add delivery, which is going to deliver more than we should have. There, there we go. That's better. Sorry about that, guys. So right now what's happening is that it, it's red because I'm actually delivering five extra compared to what was in, in the sale initially, right? So upon validation, the system is going to tell me that that was there before, that be careful, you're actually delivering more than initial demands. We confirm this. And now what would you expect to happen? Then the sales guys should actually invoice those five extra pineapples, right? And that's why you can see on the top right there that there's a new activity that's been added by the system automatically. So if I click there, you can see that on the sale order, I have one pending action to perform today. And if I click on it, it proposes me the SO30, the one with the pineapples. And you can see that I have a um, schedule action for today to actually upsell the order since the system realizes that we exceeded the other quantities with what have been, has been delivered, right? So that was the first use case. Um, another one would be to have uh, some peppers. Peppers, unlike pineapples, they also uh, invoice based on other quantities, but uh, I don't stock them. So when I'm going to confirm this sale order, I'm going to create a purchase order for the same amount of units, right? So I confirm the order. Now, if I go real quick in the purchase app, you can see that I have here an invoice, a uh, purchase order for my supplier Pepper Master for 15 units. And it's linked to the SO I just created. So just to be sure I follow up on what's happening on this record, I'm just going to set myself, the admin, as the purchase representative right there. And then if we go back to the sale order, right there, sale order 29, this one, okay. Let's say that at some point before um, before being delivered, before before we purchase the, the units at our own supplier, he changes his mind and he doesn't want 15 anymore, he wants 10 instead. Well, that, that that's tough because you actually created the RFQ, the request for quotation already, right? So you should be aware that we don't need 15, 10. Once again, you can see that there's something that's been added up by the system automatically and it's the purchase order, it's, it's on the purchase order. So if I click on this, you can see that there's a there's a an, what we call an exception. So it looks a bit different, saying, "Well, be careful," because we realize that on the sale of the link to the, this purchase order, the the quantity order decreased. So that's why we, you need to be aware of that and actually decrease it on this as well. I mean, I didn't I did show you that at, at first, but obviously the the other one uh, we showed earlier. Uh, as soon as I actually upsell, like, this market is done, right there, and write some feedback if I want. And just uh, and it won't show anymore in my uh, in my sys tray right there. Okay. Um, still on the same use case. Now it, it's not only decreasing the the order, but it's canceling it altogether. It's going to do nearly the same thing. So if I go on the purchase order link to this sale order, you can see that I have a second exception that shows up saying, well, the SOS being cancelled altogether. So maybe we shouldn't cancel on this one as well. Okay. Um, a third one, which is a bit, uh, a bit, a bit faster, is regarding the expenses. So really often, if you have, um, if you have many employees that register expenses, it's a pain if they have to come to you to actually say, well, you know, I submitted it two weeks ago. Can you please validate it? Because I mean, does it really make sense if we don't follow up on this? And it's a pain on the manager's point of view to have to reload or always the, the same page to check if there's some new, some new requests, some new submissions. This database is from the admin point of view. This is from Mark Demo, so one of the users. And Mark is going to record, is going to record a new expense. So he's going to create, um, let's say, parking ticket for OXP 2018. It's going to be a general expense. It's going to be for 12 euros. I'm going to save it. I could attach a document, but for this use case and for simplicity's sake, we won't do it. I create the report to submit to my manager. Okay. If I go on the manager point of view, you can see that now there's a new activity as well for expense reports that's just telling me you should validate this, this expense, right? And then for this one, there's, there's two validations, but it's fine, right? 
And the second case would be on the logistic side of Odoo. Um, let's say I'm, I'm still in market demo, so I'm the user. I go to maintenance. I need to schedule a new maintenance for one of my, uh, one of my laptops, for instance, right? Because it's making weird noise. So I create a new request. Weird noise from fans, for instance. I set my equipment, uh, my laptop, and responsible, uh, let's say it's myself in this case. But I need to check it next week. So I'm going to schedule it for um, Wednesday, for instance. And saving it, since I set up a scheduled date, is going to create activity as well. And if I go back there and I, I'm, I go like, well, maybe Monday I can do it, and you update the schedule quantity, it's going to update it there as well. So this is just four examples, right? but there are actually many more than this, and many more coming, I hope. So uh, for instance, this, those are the apps in which we have uh, scheduled activity. So we, we, we saw a few, but for instance, uh, we mentioned the fleece. But I can show it since we need uh, an action scenario where we actually move in time that I can't do in the demo. Um, leaves uh, behaves the same way as, as the expense, in the sense that if I submit a, an allocation request for new leaves, same thing, the, my, my manager, so he's going to go look who is the manager of the employee submitting it. And if there isn't any, he's going to look at the manager of the department. So there's always someone that will be assigned to this, um, to this activity, right? So leaves behave the same way, just, just validation, just asking the manager to validate. And then um, appraisal, also if you schedule a final interview, uh, for an appraisal, or if you send appraisal forms to some of employees of managers, so those managers we have also an activity as well. Um, we also thought about other ones, uh, for instance, quality. For instance, we can imagine uh, if if I if I'm the one dealing with the quality checks and uh, there's an alert at some point because something is not quite right, we could imagine having an activity for a managers or supervisor or team leader to just go check what this issue is about. You could also have um, for timesheets, for instance, timesheet validations. You can also imagine um, a regular scale activity that happens every I don't know, month. And that's how we do it in, you know, doing the quick start. So every month, our manager needs to validate our timesheets. That should be also an idea. Um, the feature is quite new, and we're still working on the um, on new ones we could add without going on the spam side because we don't want the user to have way too much activities. Obviously, no one likes spam, and you won't receive any emails. So that you save on that side. Um, but if you have any idea, so my, qu my presentation is done. Thank you very much. Um, if you have any ideas, <laughs> so that was pretty straightforward. Uh, if you have questions, yes. Uh, these rules are created by default, or we have created? That's a good question. Um, since it's the first, um, first version in which we have this, and since in the ones I showed you, we deal with more than one model. So it's like, the S, it's, it's quite complex. The SO needs to identify which PO has been generated. So we need to be careful of this is set up already. So it's not trivial. Uh, I mean, expenses are trivial and new allocations are. But right now it's hard coded. So you won't be able to edit it. But in the future versions, that would be a pretty nice touch. Also to be to give the opportunity to, uh, to admins to set up their own automations. They won't maybe be as, um, as complex. They won't maybe deal with many models at once. But that, that's that, that's that's the the next step in this case. So are done. It's done. It's in the system, definitely. Uh, but um, I, I hope in, in future versions we'll be able to create it ourselves. Yeah. If you have any ideas on extra ones, by the way, from from your experience, that's that's also my pen and paper. So it's also always good questions. Yes. Many user requests such features, mm -hmm. but they want to be able to customize. Yeah. That that's that's the, ne the next step. As I said, the next in, in our thread of thoughts, that would be the next um, update of those options. Now the user needs to realize that um, it's it's complex to simplify something that's complex. You know what I mean? So in some of the activities I showed. It deals with different models. You need to check some things. There's one that I didn't show because it was quite complex. Is with the, um, the expiration dates on the lots. So if you have a CN number or a lot um, for which we reach the alert, and if this lot has quantities in the system, you're gonna have an alert. But obviously, like for me, I, I, I would work on this on a new feature that would just allow the user on really simple, simply on one model to say, well, if this action, if this, if, I mean, if I go back to this slide to set this up myself. So to say this is a trigger condition and we just maybe identify generic cases and this is the model in which I want to create the action and this is the person that needs to be assigned to it and this is the timing I want. Yes? 
Um, how different is this from the existing automated actions that stay in program? Okay, the, the, the name is quite similar. Uh, automated actions, those are, those are more complex in the sense that it's on the customization side, on the studio yeah. side. So it's basically, basically saying, well, when I update a record, when I create a record, I want this field to behave like this, yeah. to, to have this value. Yeah. Those ones are automated activities in the sense that, um, I mean, it's two different, really two different things. It just, it looks, the, the, the name sounds the same. Um, I would say automated actions is customization. Automated activities is more on the, it's way more functional. It's uh, just reminders, if you want. N not, um, the actions are automated, it's not automations. You know I mean? But you could achieve the same with the existing automated actions. Oh, you could. If, if you take savvy enough, definitely you could. Yes? Uh, uh, automated activities uh, already exist in MCR, right? Uh, they have, I think that there's some, maybe there's a few that looks, a few, few, I'm not the CRM expert, but there may be few uh, behaviors that look like it, but this is... Uh, it's with conditions if uh, the lead moves to from stage yeah. to another stage. Yeah, this is one as well. So the CRM must be the head. Automatically created activity on a certain sales person or someone else, right? Yeah. So it's a similar activity. CRM already had some activities automated, yeah, in the sense, yes. Why not? Uh, the example for the, uh, purchase order and sales order, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. uh, why not to just uh, propose a notification? Uh, there is an action that will be done automatically if you agree, they agree. Oh, I mean, like just. Yes. Having like an extra button saying apply the change. That, that is a good point. Um, really often when we talk about automations, we need to realize that we shouldn't go into the buy. The, the, the okay, so you, so you mean just by clicking this is going to change the record itself? That's a good point, but we also like the user to be aware of what's actually happening. Because if you just resume this in one click of a button, sometimes people tend to, you know, when you install some things, you go to go next, 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 next. And we're just scared of some people might be, I mean, not realizing the impact of what they're doing. So it, 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 it's, a, it's a good point. Um, but in this case, we, we really like the idea of the user uh, actually, yeah, just it's like heads up, alerts, and then he does the change. Sorry? So it's an automated uh, notification yeah. with manual activity. Yeah, activity. That, that would be the idea. Yeah. It's, it's like, um, it's, like I say, reminders. So, uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs>